Goose two, Bavadia and Bishop Hall towards the rear there. Yes, and they're going at this pace quite fast. Uh, little young hustlers in front, and uh, but we see very shortly, in actual fact, on the outside, in the right of the pictures we look, is Shaw Metal in the blue colours, pulling like a train skew. Yes, and on the inside there, I think, just going to it now, that's Bavadier, and he's jumped up there, he's over jumped and unseated his rider. Uh, uh, Jason, that's uh, Jason Titley, like R Bob Champion, going from winning one year to uh, falling at the first next year. There's nothing more disappointing than this. Look at that. This. Uh, sure metal streams over it. I get to see uh, Bishop's Hall fall. So, uh, Bishop's Hall, who is Marcus Armitage on board, and he really did fancy this on the ground. There he well, goes. Well, that was just an overjump skew, wasn't yes, it? Yes, typical, just speed. Two national winning jockeys ending up on the floor. No uh, Grand National, no respecter of reputations. There in the middle is uh, Superior finished. Richard Woody, let's watch him jumping a fence. He knows more about seeing a stride than anybody. This side here is Paul Carberry, who gave his horse a terrific ride, the three brownies. Um, but nice. Look at the jump from Shaw Metal there, Skew. He stood off outside the wing. I can hear the uh, stewards' inquiries coming through in a minute, I think. Well, three brownies is just there on the inside. Uh, on the outside is Shaw Metal and Donald McCain, three brownies, and Paul Carberry fell at the 27th in 1995. And you can see that Shaw Metal really reaching there and getting the ground that he needs. The grey in the middle is... Uh, Rough Quest has been confirmed as keeping the win, keeping the race, Richard. Uh, so a very happy Mick Fitzgerald. Yes. Party politics fell then, but just again to reiterate, the placings will remain as they are. Go back up front. Only the first two results remain. We're waiting for another result of the other inquiry. There is Paul Carberry just with the old, the, they're just pulling his leather straight there. Why do you think that then, Skew? What I don't know, something might have been just pinching him. Brave man must be Donald McCain here in front on Shaw Metal. I'm not sure that I'd be brave enough to, to ride him. And he must have wasted a fair bit to get down to 10 stone because uh, that is very light. He's a big boy, but Shaw Metal pricks his ears and he quickens going into the fence. He launches himself into the air, but three brownies, you know, giving Paul Carberry a great ride in behind. Grey son of war streaming over there. These boys, uh, uh, here's Chatham just refusing at the back. He says, I've been here before. I don't like this place. <laughs> but uh, these, it, I cannot get over enough. What a great thrill it is to, to ride over these fences. There in the blue blinkers is Sir Peter Lilly, who's uh, given uh, his rider, Chris Bonner, a great, great ride. Well, he's given the horse a great ride. And they're coming down to Beaches here. You know that Beaches is approaching by that gap and the hedge there and the angle at the Beaches. And look at the way they've jumped that. Streamed over it, short, short metal. And so now the Grey successfully getting down there. In fact, they all jump it particularly well, but we absolutely flying. This is the smallest fence on the course. Sir Peter Lilly in the blue blinkers and the yellow colours in third. Chris Bonner was third on another horse over the deal last year. And he's having another terrific ride this time. A very good amateur indeed. The Grey there had just been niggled along for a while, but on the outside, the left of the pictures, we see it skew. Your horse, young hustler, loving it. Yes, they're all getting ready for this very, very sharp bend. You can see Paul Carberry in front there on three brown. He's given this a terrific ride. You want to be careful. You don't want them to stand off too far, but see the angle they've got. They've all drifted across and getting... There's Wild Hyde streaming over, Son of War streaming over. And then at the back there, that's uh, Captain Dibble, who's found the pace a little bit too hot for them. Now the jockeys will be now sort of relaxing a little bit now. You can sort of begin to... Uh, Study a position that you've got, have a look around, see what's fallen, try and find out where a favourite is and try and sort of ascertain your uh, position in the race and where you want to be. You've usually got your horse jumping well by now. One we must mention there, going third, Green Hills Raffles, who was only bought this week for 12,000 guineas. You know, they're having the ride of their time. Martin Foster on board for Lucinda Russell, and that's giving them a good show for their money. The grey is still being niggled along, Skew, but he gets in a better position later. Yes, I'm delighted for Martin Foster, who uh, deserves his chance in the big time. He's a good, solid rider, and uh, it gives him his chance to shine. Here the, again, Donald McCain just holding him up there, a beautiful, beautiful piece of riding within the horse. Comes out the other side, so Peter Lely streaming over. There, this Riverside boy giving David Walsh a fine ride. Now they're and heading back towards the course proper. 
And in about sixth place there, Skew, the McManus colours, Wild Hyde, Franny Woods, he's been creeping, creeping in a good position all the way, just with his eye on the leaders. Yes, and I often remember sitting in the wearing room, uh, listening to you doing this and uh, saying, you, you, in your mind now, although you're jumping these, you've got beaches and uh, the chair waiting around the corner for you. You've got these sort of nice little fences to get them going, but at the back of your mind, you're still worried about the chair. Yes, and Rough Quest really biding his time, not in the leading 10 at this stage a loose horse coming through but doesn't actually in there that's party politics doesn't actually do any damage and join the field but he could easily have done but up front they've taken a pull now skew they've settled down because you can see the whole field uh, drawing together there's rough quest with deep bramble on his inside they're really sighting the leaders now that's right they're all bunching up the, the early pace is sort of eased off a little bit and those even the ones at the back are able to start to get it into the race this is a lovely shot the concentration of the uh, jockeys all uh, concentrating very, very hard. I yes. think Paul Carberry and Donald McCain are having a chat to each other there, I think. And uh, uh, one just coming into the picture is uh, over the deal, Tim McCarthy. He's in the red there, just going through, having the ride of his life the first time he's been to Aintree. But now, of course, jockeys are starting to concentrate because they know that the chair is not very far ahead and there's a loose horse amongst them. Yes, yeah, so we've seen the problems that have been caused by loose horses at the chair before, but uh, thankfully not today. This is a tricky fence in itself. Horses can go and put in. Richard and Woody in superior finish, giving his usual fine ride over there. And there's uh, Captain Dibble hunting up the rear. Yes, Woody was certainly relaxed on superior finish, but now as they straighten up, this is the narrowest part of the course. Uh, Donald McCain's got the lead, whether he wanted it or not at this stage, I don't know. But the horse just backs off a little bit there. That's again, people talk about these fences, but they're, they're lovely in the fact that they are big enough to make horses back off and go and make them a jump uh, properly. That was Kim Bailey's horse uh, over, uh, bringing up the reel, uh, over the stream, bringing up the rear there. But now you can see they start to uh, try and pick a spot because if you can't see the fence, it's twice as difficult. And I love watching this. You watch uh, young hustlers. They talk about horses enjoying or not enjoying. You watch his ears, the way he jumps his chair. He absolutely loves it. Uh, and he's not very big, Skew, not either, very is big. He? Son of War just popping over. On Corn Purr and David Bridgewater just quietly getting into the race there. And yes. then once again at the back over the deal. And Vicomte de Valma. But just see them now. You can see Look they all got just about half a stride away from that board. Rough Quest popping in and actually touching well, the board. Well, Yes, and uh, over the stream just... Uh, he doesn't look to be enjoying it as much as the others, actually. That uh, was Philip Hyde on Vicomte de Valmont. Now the water, this is always an easy... It's really a confidence restorer here. It can be tricky, though, Richard. I, I, you, horses can go and stand off too far and just catch the lip, and I've seen also horses run out at it because it's just a, a, a little bit different. Son of War creeping through. He'd been off the bridle. Of Double handful for Mick Fitzgerald. Son of War, the grey in the middle there. He's getting nearer all the time. I would think they'd be very happy with the way. Three Brownies has been up right from the start. He's on the inner, right down the fence there for Paul Carberry, having his second ride in the race. But Young Hustler, who is his third national, and he deserved to, to do this before. Yes, and the uh, one just beginning to drop out of the picture now is Shaw Metal. Yes, and uh, interesting to see that there are a lot of horses on this good ground still in contention. Uh, I would still think, though, that the time, I haven't heard the time, I doubt whether it's uh, record-breaking because they did really slow the pace up uh, at the halfway stage. Plenty still in there. Over the stream is there. Uh, over the deal, Green Hills Raffles, horses that we haven't mentioned a lot. Um, over the deal and Tim McCarthy still back in fourth place and having a tremendous ride, but one coming into it is Life of a Lord there with the blue hat on the outside closely followed by rough quest yes and uh, streaming over there and young hustler still with his ears pricked tim mccarthy's uh, lose nothing in style against the professionals does he he looks as uh, neat and tidy as anybody but what a thrill for your first ride but now look at son of war he's come back on the bridal skew yes it, again a lovely feeling as you come back here you just begin to ease yourself into the race jump that really well still streaming over and captain dibble and into the red just hunting up behind there and what was the fall of uh, it was brackenfield that went there he put his uh, feet in the ditch and you don't get away with a mistake like that 
terrific shots here and you can see the difference in size in horses young hustler is not big he's brave uh, three brownies has got plenty of size about him and the big blue blinkers just poking in there of sir peter lily mickey hammond's horse on the very inside but look how wide on the left of the picture rough quest is yes but as i say he just you know he knows he's on the best horse in the race he's just got to present him up that run in with a chance and he's going to win don't get brought down must be his uh, great feeling at the back there about to be uh, pulled up it's far senior it's far senior yeah. yeah well they bought him this week and uh, i didn't think he'd get round this far but you can see how spread they are they're five or six upsides in front uh, and riverside boy really clouted that but he's running a good race yeah great thrill for david walsh it's uh, you know a young man in his position getting a ride for the championship chainer elect again for in the grand national big break in your career and he's given this a great ride deep brambles come there a little bit better that even the sheepskin no span with the green even though the ground's too fast for him and the red towards the inside now david bridgewater's taking a different route to mick fitzgerald sitting giving this horse a beautiful ride david who's really uh, stamping in his authority as david uh, martin pipes uh, first jockey and this will really do him a lot of good second beaches and the gray and connor o'dwyer the gray's nose hit the floor there but he got away with it and ginger mccain's son donald still going around but he's lost his petrol yes there you are that's the way to jump breaches land and go all in one motion but look at the nod of the head of the gray there it actually touched the floor how he got away with it and got back up i don't know somebody ginger. waving yeah, yeah it was ginger. Came waving at this lusty lights uh, uh, he was never in it skip no he's getting tired but up front now we see that uh, they're all starting to just come into it now these first seven riders must all be thinking i've got a big chance of victory here that's right young hustler made a first semblance of a mistake there because that fence is uh, is small and the uh, back markers now begin to uh, get tailed off a little bit now now the thing we want to look for as they go to the second canal turn and look where the gray's going right down the paint is this is where he exits up front we got sir peter lily and young hustler they're cutting out the pace but the action will come from just in behind the leaders see that chris bonnet taking the angle there beautifully all dropping in and you see son of war on the inside getting no room at all you see and there and that's probably caused the uh, the fall because the room that he was going there to jump has just disa disappeared well two irish horses going there and both unseated riders i know it's easy sitting here skew uh, but there's no doubt about it uh, both franny woods uh, and connor exited we'll see that again look oh he really hit that fence yes, hard I think, you know that that's uh, he, he'd have a little bit of green on his nose yes and, but and, francis and wood will have it on his bottom <laughs> he came out the back door yeah, i think he was he could have been knocked off looking at that right up front now what a ride the amateur chris bonner has given this horse he will be stamped now as an entry jockey he was third last year he's given this another tremendous ride yes and now you uh, now you really are beginning to feel a bit of history you've seen all the films as a kid when you've watched the bbc films here and you know that uh, you're there on you and uh, what a what a this is a lovely part of the race he's a beautiful line of fences to jump and you're just hoping that uh, you keep jumping well another superb jump by uh, young hustler three brown is uh, just nodding a little bit there Bridgie binding his time and on call and per superior finish just coming in with woody there he's about seventh but he's just behind rough quest makes a lot of ground from there but at this stage you would think that the leading three all are just taking a pull skew they're all trying to conserve yes they're trying to get the, what you're trying to do is get your horses up on the bridle you, you, you'd love to go to the front now and say whoa old boy uh, and uh, give him a bit of confidence but all three of you are trying to do it it's it's, it's very difficult and Bridgie, you can see him do that just drop his hands on the horse there and uh, the horse is uh, you know feeling oh, gosh I am going well you know and it just helps well David Bridgewater doesn't need to stamp himself as a good jockey we've always known he is but here he's being cool he's doing the right thing in fact he's done nothing wrong but hasn't got victory today three brownies just comes up ahead in front there this could be an awkward fence but rough quest sneaking through and uh, Mick Fitzgerald must be thinking they're going well in front but so am i yes it must be uh, you know i suppose he's, he's he's in the most classic position now isn't he he's in the uh, he's in the driving seat he's just getting a little toe he's got that little pocket and uh, he's uh, following them through i, th I was you know, bridgie obviously must have thinking he's going very very well and uh, he must know that rough quest's there some somehow but if you watched him throughout the, the race he didn't really pick up his stick till late because i you know i don't think the horse would run for a for a, for a lot of smack 
but Paul Carberry in the middle there, very flat race style. He almost looks like Lester Piggott, doesn't he, with well, his, his bottom up in yeah. the air? You know, I keep uh, singing his praises. I think he's a great, great rider. Well, and we've also said how he rides with his toes in his irons. Well, after jumping uh, 27 of these fences, <laughs> skew, he's got his foot right through. But Bridgie at that stage, did you see just a little look over his yeah. left shoulder? He's seen off Mooney, off yeah. Young Hustler, and he's looking across to evaluate the danger on the inner. Yes, yeah, just assess the situation. But there, unfortunately for David, the the uh, shark is stalking him from behind, and the ever cool Mick Fitzgerald wonderful stylist has just laid his horse laid on his hands on the horse's neck and just waiting to pounce not many jockeys will know that feeling and uh, going through your head is god just keep lovely you safe lovely just see that but see, he's just easing the horse back. You see him just come back on his hocks, going into there. Woo, woo, woo. And he's, the more he's done that, the better he's going. The better he's going, and the better he's longer. It must be a lovely feeling going to that last uh, um, with uh, that much but energy. All of a sudden, Skew, the picture changed. It stretched. Bridgie kicked for home. He got five lengths, and that could have been uh, the winning of the national for him. Yeah. But I, for the shark, as you said, stalking. Yeah. I know Bridgie's watching this, and he was brilliant here. Well done, Bridgie. Big smile on his face there. But. Uh, just flicked, the, flicked through the uh, uh, the fence there, and now they're running towards the, the last. Here they come. Just I don't flicked. feel that stopped him. Oh, terribly. not at all. No, I mean it's you know you're you're flat out. Oh, and he's got away from it, it, it quick. But you you, you notice David up the uh, running. He did everything right. He never went for his stick until he got on, onto the uh, up the running, and the horse was running his best for him. Quite amazing, that shot, seeing him well clear, you'd have thought nothing would catch him, and Mick Fitzgerald starting to work now. He's saying, well, I'm going to get to the elbow, and then I'm going to go for home. But this horse needs to be held up, but I've hung around long enough. But just also look back now, because in sixth place is so Superior Finish, who actually makes a lot of ground, as does Life of a Lord, and the horse in yellow, Sir Peter Lilly. These are the real stayers at the end, but this is the incident, Skew. Yes, I'm a mix, you know... Luckily for Mick, he's just far enough in front. I mean, and Bridgie has had to pull out round, and he's won just far enough. There must have been a little bit of a case to answer. And you watch, you pointed out, David hasn't hit this horse on court on per, and he's waving his hand without his stick in it so he, to encourage the horse forward. And uh, not he's, he knows that that horse isn't going to hit, uh, go for any quicker for being hit. Well, here was the moment that the stewards must have looked at from every conceivable angle, and in the end, they've decided that the winner did not impede the second sufficiently to change that result. It wasn't deliberate. Uh, Mick Fitzgerald low in the saddle now. Um, Bridgie coming to the outer, changes his hands, and there, look, that's where he's doing it with his hand. It's anything to try and galvanise a horse that's into right. a little surge. Yeah, I mean, I honestly feel that the standard of riding is getting higher and higher and higher, and these two boys have given a magnificent ex exhibition of horsemanship. Yes, and we mustn't forget those who finish behind either, because uh, there are a lot of gallant efforts today. Mick Fitzgerald really gasping his mouth open there. He knows now that he's won it. There's going to be that victory wave of the hand, and that feeling is one that so few ever knew. Ralph Quest, the winner. I'm so delighted for their connections. Really sporting, really good people. Second encore and per third superior finish. Jenny Pittman once again in the frame. And uh, Sir Peter Lely, a wonderful race to finish fourth. Then came Young Hustler in fifth, who made so much of the running, jumped for fun, jumped the chair, as Skew said, uh, so brilliantly. Six was Three Brownies, who was right there in contention till two out, ran a wonderful race and way out of the handicap. Seventh, Charlie Swan's Mount, Life of a Lord. Eighth was Antonin on ground, much too firm for him. Ninth was over the deal, ran a good race. And tenth, another soft ground horse, Vicomte de Valmont. Eleventh was Captain Dibble, good old boy. And twelfth, that old character, Riverside Boy. Thirteenth was over the stream. Fourteenth, the horse who changed hands on Monday, Greenhill Raffles. Fifteenth was Into the Red. Sixteenth was Lusty Light. And last of the 17th was Shaw Metal, who pulled up a little bit sore, burst an artery and sustained an injury behind, but is OK. The fallers. Bishop's Hall fell at the first. Bavadier unseated his rider. That was Jason Titley. He's been taken to hospital with uh, unknown injuries. Fence number three, the first ditch. Party politics, of all people, fell there. At the fifth, Chatham pulled up there. 
At fence 13, rust never sleeps pulled up, and that's sadly the one fatality of the race. At fence number 19, Brackenfield fell. At fence number 27, Far Senior was pulled up. At the canal turn, Son of War, the Grey, unseated his rider there, and number 13, Wild Hyde was brought down. In fact, uh, Wild Hyde, I think I'm right in saying, was uh, brought down at, at the 24th. That's correct. The 29th, or before the 29th, Deep Bramble was pulled up.